Remember to engage the rail. You keep falling down, I keep pushing you out and wish you were gone. You keep falling down, I keep pushing you out and wish you were gone. Oh, did you see that? We get out there, I reckon. If you ever talk to me, brings back good memories. Welcome back to Rivals. Our next competitor is Kiala Kennelly, the hashtag Yas Queen of Cones of Mortal Coniquince. The Kawaiian came, saw, and conquered some of the heaviest waves on the planet in her career, following in the footsteps of her Kawaiian Kane and last week's contender, Rochelle Ballard. Chopes, jaws, pipe, maxing out of reefs. Kiala's career was a tour de force of waves that will f you up. She was no slouch in more marginal conditions either, managing a world title runner up to none other than the original femme goat, Lane Beachley. Kiala's considered the red hot favourite to take out the rival's crown this season. With Pipeline in her backyard, there's little wonder why. My best bet would be to surf somewhere like Pipeline and just try and get like some kind of incredible barrel. You definitely feel good to walk away with a trophy. You have to be okay with dying. You have to be okay with something crazy happening to you. She's taking like women surfing big waves to another level, you know, and I think we all admire her like so much, you know, for what she's doing. You just knew that if you drew like someone like Kayala at Chopu, you're probably gonna lose. <laughs> Unless you're gonna throw yourself over the ledge. You can have it, I don't, I don't want it, you go. It was just so fun to watch. You didn't know if she was just gonna like get absolutely annihilated or get the biggest barrel of her life. I don't think surfing Jaws is gonna be a fair environment for Kiala to do series two. Maybe pipeline, but I'd rather not because then my chances are completely eradicated. There's only so much that a body can handle, so uh, it, it's a little concerning, some of the wipeouts that she was taking. As long as like the lip doesn't like pile drive you first into the, into the reef, as long as like the water fills in, there's usually a buffer. You've got to pay to play in Kiala's caper. During one particularly infamous wipeout at Piahi, aka Jaws, she may as well have been wearing a cape as she airdropped off the top of a four-story building. 2019, I surfed in the Piahi Challenge, took some really gnarly wipeouts. In fact, I think I won Wipeout of the Year that year at XXL. <laughs> like, I love winning stuff, but that's definitely not an award at the beginning of the year you put on your goals list, like, win the wipeout, like, <laughs> you know. She followed that up with another vicious beating in this year's Red Bull Magnitude event, sustaining a serious injury to her hip. I felt my entire kind of like leg get pulled out of the hip socket and go back in. And I heard like an audible like and I just remember thinking like, I don't think that's good. I think that's caused some damage there. Kiala wasn't wrong. Scans revealed she would need surgery, ruling her out of this year's rival series. Went and got an MRI, and turns out I have a really massive tear in my labrum, in my hip socket. And I'm really bummed about that, because uh, this seems like it was gonna be a lot of fun, but uh, my super best good friend, Claire Bevilacqua, is taking my spot, so I couldn't ask for a better replacement. Kiala's replacement is no shrinking violet. If there's one region that holds a candle to Hawaii, it's Western Australia, where raw Indian Ocean swells ram the many reef breaks that dot the coastline. Our fill-in Claire Bevilacqua has spent a serious portion of her career packing cones and eating donuts as she plied her trade on the many meaty slabs nearby. A two-time Pipeline Pro Champion and stalwart of Volcom's infamous Pipe House, she might be a late inclusion, but many have her tipped as a dark horse to take out the rival's crown. I'm super stoked to be a part of it. I get to, to compete in, in my backyard and I don't have to go anywhere and, and I get another chance to take out my old rivals. Now my money's on her to win, because she is 
just an amazing surfer, super progressive. Like, she'll bust air, she gets barreled, like, she does it all. So, um, my money's on Claire now, guys. Sorry. Sorry to hear that, KK. Um, but excited to hear that Claire's gonna come on board and um, take her spot. Every time I look at her Instagram, she's getting like barreled. Like, I think she's like spends all day in the, in the barrel, you know? She's probably gonna be one of the hardest out there and the one that is probably gonna charge the best waves. Every girl that I'm competing against has kicked my ass many, many times. And I, I would just hope that I had, you know, now I have a chance to kind of throw it back at them and show what I'm good at, which is these kind of waves, I think. No, I think it's anyone's game. Everyone's still really good. I always say that Lane could still come on tour and, and win heats. I have never underestimated the power of Lane. She's, um, she's a freak. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of thrown a spanner in the works though because she's got a bit of an advantage with the wave quality and she's still ripping and she's a bit younger so you know but anyway good luck Claire. <laughs> Born in the mostly waveless West Oz capital of Perth, Claire spent as much time in the high performance surfing hotbeds of Yellinger and Margaret River three hours south as she could in her formative years. That's where she lives today, trading waves on the daily with local surfing legends such as Taj Burrow, Jack Robinson, Jay Davies, and many others. I kind of think that we have something special over here with these West Aussie slabs, and I wanted to kind of throw that in the mix and just do something different and, and basically do what I do every single day, which is surf these kind of waves. Two hours, plenty of time. Yeah, hopefully get a couple of barrels and a couple of turns and come in safely. <laughs> I'm not going to disclose where we're going. I mean, it's in the in the Margaret River region, I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, it's, it's not a very crowded spot. It's, it's off the beaten track and not a lot of people know about it or really like to surf it. So I'm going to keep it um, on, the, on the down low. After the break, we learn more about Claire's hometown. So growing up in the 80s and the 90s in, in Perth, you know, we were quite sheltered. We The surfers were outcasts. They weren't really celebrated back then. And there was a lot of grommet abuse and localism and it was tough. So, you know, you had to really fight for it. You had to fight for your place in the lineup. You had to prove yourself constantly and, and show the boys that, you know, you could take off on the sets and that you deserve to be out the back with them and fighting them for the, for the best waves. So I definitely, drew inspiration from, from watching Kelly Slater and in, in black and white and the surf mags and all the stuff that was littered around the house by my brothers. I didn't really know the surf world. I wasn't surrounded by too much of it. So I just knew that I wanted to get out there and I wanted to push myself and I wanted to try it because it felt like to me, like you were walking on water. I wanted to experience and feel that even as a little girl, like I could tell it was like, like being on a boat and gliding over the surface. Like I wanted, I wanted to stand up on the board and it just was a natural progression from skateboarding to boogie boarding to standing up. The dream took shape for Claire Young, but it didn't come easily. When most kids her age were deciding what to wear to the formal, she was living in a surf team share house with a bunch of seasoned degenerates and doing her best to make a fist of it on the world stage. When I was 16, I signed with Volcom, my, my first contract, and I went over to the East Coast and, and lived with the Volcom crew over there. They, they had a team house, so I would just spending all my time away from home. I, I went to the States, I went international with Volcom around 18 and spent most of my career in America and I had to get out there and, and put myself out there and basically just immerse myself in every single kind of condition. And as soon as I qualified, I was thrown into Hawaii and Chopu and Fiji and all these places that I hadn't even seen anything like that in my whole life. Even down south here, I, I wasn't exposed to the perfection and, and the intensity and the power of those Polynesian waves. And that's how I built my repertoire, was just trying everything, surfing everything and uh, giving it 100%. <laughs> I always did best in Hawaii. That was just where I totally felt like that was home away from home. I could set up with the boys. I felt special with the boys at the Volcom house. Like I felt different from the rest and I had that advantage being able to practice out there and build my confidence and have the, you know, the encouragement and the blessing of the boys who are so 
dominant and prominent there on the North Shore. Hawaii was definitely my favourite place on tour. All the years of hard graft didn't pan out the way Claire had predicted. The tour wasn't for her in the end, and winning a world title was not the be-all and end-all of her surfing journey. I think the problem with me and why maybe I didn't have the success that I could have was because I wasn't really competitive ever against the other girls. I was competitive against myself. That's what I realise now, like it was never about world titles or who was the best at the time because I just wanted to be the best that I could be. I retired at around 30. I just, I was burnt out from the tour. I'd had enough, I'd been on the road since I was 16 and I was just fed up. I moved down south when I turned 30 and that's when I really kind of started to progress more when I could just surf perfect waves every single day. And as a woman, like you definitely hit your prime in your 30s and it's crazy because from a marketing point of view in the industry, I'm like chopped liver. Like, it's crazy, like, I'm like feeling the best I've ever felt in my life and I'm 30 and the industry's looking at you like, stay at home girl and have a couple of babies and you know, that's it, it's over for you and um, you just gotta take care of yourself and that's what, you know, it's all about self-preservation and yeah, if you take care of yourself, you definitely can keep improving over the years and um, it doesn't have to be over once you hit your 30s and 40s, no way, freaking primo. A lot of people don't really realise how abruptly you get dropped from your sponsors and, and how cutthroat the industry is and, and how it just, you know, it's coming in, the money's coming in and it's exciting and then all of a sudden it just stops. And, you know, a lot of us didn't really do too well in high school, you know, we, I definitely was relying on surfing 100%. That was my thing and that's what I was committed to. So it can be hard for surfers to transition into a normal lifestyle and a normal job, but I come from humble beginnings and um, my, my family had always been in property management and building and I bought myself a, a block of land here in Yelling Up and I got a crew together of, of some really good guy friends that were builders and I built my own home and I built it from scratch. So yeah, I'm very proud of it and you can do anything you set your mind to and I was one determined little Italian um, tradie. Welcome to the pad, this is it. This is what all the slave labour was about. I decided that I wanted to be self-sustainable, self-sufficient, and basically try and live off the land and, and have privacy and space and just be able to create my own little oasis heaven. We got mint, cauliflower, rocket, onions, kale, all the herbs you could ever need, chilies, spinach, um, sweet potato, what more could you need, you know, like, this is, this is it. I was able to do whatever I wanted as an owner builder and express myself. Every single piece has a story here. I used a lot of recycled stuff and, and that just gave it so much character and, um, and it made it also affordable. It's my favorite room in the house. Every board in here is important. I love them all, I ride them all. Some of them not so much anymore. Some old jerseys and I don't know, this is kind of like my, I guess the boards are my trophy room. Definitely don't have a room like, like Lane's. I know when I win something, I just chuck my trophy in the garden. Just look at it there. Looks better there anyway. That's where my trophies go, in the garden. That's it, that's what I do. I play in the garden, play in the surf and play in the house with, with the doggos. I love this quiet lifestyle. The East Coast doesn't really suit me. I get nervous with the traffic and all the people and I don't know if we laugh at you East Coasters so much as we just like don't want too many people to know how good it is over here so we can uh, keep it all to ourselves. After the break, we step through the portal into Claire's Misto Cone Zone. I'm always scared. Let's keep a low profile. That doesn't get any better than that. Oh my gosh, that looks so perfect. Perfect! Looks good. Wow, goodbye. <laughs> perfect! Looks good, like it always does. <laughs> this wave is definitely uh, the carnage wave. You, you usually either get a whipping or... Oh my gosh, that wave was... Oh my gosh, that was so perfect. Hopefully the boys let me get some waves. They usually do. It's a pretty tight little community out here, so we just um, we just take turns for the most part. So I'll do the righty and 
wait my turn and um, just send it as high as I can. <laughs> I need a bigger board because I'm light and little, so the guys can ride smaller boards out there than me just to hold my ground and, and set my line and, and be able to stand up a little bit more in the barrel. I'm kind of old school, it's like one board, one wax job. I just trust my equipment and it doesn't really matter to me what I ride out there. I've had way too much coffee, as per usual. I can't believe that there's no one out. It's like the stars have aligned for me and <laughs> everything is, is happening for a reason. Well, get a look at this, would ya? Here we are, down south WA, and it is pumping in a way that only down south WA seems to be able to produce on a consistent basis. Four foot offshore and freaking toning. And Claire Bevel Aqua, mate, out here is a late inclusion into rivals this year on the back of an injury from uh, Kiala Kennelly, and she will make good use of it too because she's got pumping waves and she's got incredible ability. Two hours, plenty of time. Might just get a couple of warm up, get the nerves out of the way. It's just like any time I surf this place, I feel the same kind of excitement and nerves as I do, even uh, competing at a high level. So it's probably why I love it so much. I just, right in my backyard, I just don't have to go very far for that. Oh, wow. A nugget of Indian Ocean rearing up on the ledge. She takes off and packs an inside pit. Wow, what a start to her rival's heat. She's in contention, Vaughan, that's for sure. Well, we won't say where this wave is, but it is a wave that we've seen before in Jack McCoy films with Luke Egan and Munger Barry getting slotted on the exact same little bit of reef. And Claire is off to a flyer. Some nice little vision. What I love about this wave, though, Smith, is the style. Absolute calm in the eye of the storm. Cobalt blue, not a drop out of place. Rainbows everywhere. <laughs> Wow, it's West. West is best. They love it down there. Claire Bevel Aqua, of course, was one of those surfers who came out strong as a young woman. But look at this. She loves the juice as well. Oh, that's incredible. Late under the lip and it just gets throttled. Wow, rolled into that thing. Tries to park it inside a super thick pit. Gets pretty well positioned but can't quite make it out, I think. What? How well did she do to oh. hold onto that thing, Smithy? Wow, that's like copping a punch in the face, a lip like that. Huge wave there from Claire Bevel Aqua as she sets up another one on the inside, pulls in deep. Two deep. She set her intentions here. It's all about the tube as she fades a load into smithereens. Cop that. Bit of caviar in your face. Oh, it's the setup, Smivy. The setup is absolutely on point today, and the other competitors in this year's rival series would be absolutely freaking right now because Bevel Aqua has got the read on this incredible little inside drainer. Oh, wow, she just came from behind that thing, packed it, pumped through double chambers, but just can't quite get the completion. Real shame, that was an absolute cylindrical shaft. Incredible top view here as we look down upon Claire Bevel Aqua just threading the needle. Such impeccable tube riding skills, yet to get the big make. But flies off the bottom and another big stall. And you can see there again, Smith, the way that she comes off the bottom with so much time, really gets on the tail. And what that does is just put her in that perfect position for vision. It's not small out there either, Vaughan. We're looking at drop up four to six foot of Indian Ocean, long period energy breaking over a shallow reef, not for the faint of heart, but look at this control on the foam ball. Are you kidding me? The double arm drag, a J Davies special, no doubt a lot of surfing done in the same lineups between these two. And uh, you know, we just continue to see West Oz surfers rewrite the book in waves of conequence. Oh, pumping down. Oh, look at this thing just roping off. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a big, fast drainer and just every single wave that has come her way, Bevel Aqua has packed. And this is a performance for the books, Smithy. I can't remember seeing this much vision going down since Jacob Wilcox pulled in on that monster up north. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, Vaughan. I mean, for all the tubes that she's packed, she hasn't made too many. And the ones that she has made, they haven't been particularly deep tube rides. So technically not that difficult necessarily. 
plenty of courage, though, in packing those clothes out for the vision. The pineal gland on the woman's just going to be pulsating. The interesting thing to consider as we think about this year's rival series is what sort of surfing is going to translate to the public. Because Claire Bevel Aqua, despite the fact she might not have the runs on the board in terms of big makes, she has put on a raging performance here in terms of getting in the spot and packing it for the Viz. I tend to agree, Vaughan. I mean, being an Australian, this is the kind of surfing that gets me jazzed. Vision, cones, tubes, mortal poniquins, and fading blokes. <laughs> oh my goodness, what about this oh, thing? Oh, oh, are you kidding me, Vaughn? She rolled in to an absolute nougat and got pretty much blown out of it. Look at this front view right into the tube we ride with Claire Bevel Aqua. This is the one she's been waiting for. Is this the ride that might just seal rivals for 2022? There you have it, an iconic tube shootout in the West and a worthy replacement for the Kauaian core lord cone fiend, Kiala Kennelly. Claire absolutely sent it. Let's hear some tales from her tubular journey. I get so nervous, it's like, I need to like rest for a few days after I serve it because the whole time you're just so nervous on what's going to come and how it's going to unfold on the reef and if it's going to you know, chop your head off or it's going to actually let you out. So every wave is just, you have no idea. And that's why we love it. It's so exciting and nerve wracking. And yeah, I'm just um, happy that I got a few. And, and uh, the boys were there out there with me and cheering me on and encouraging me, which gets me extra excited. I got everything in my hair, like seaweed, starfish, a bit of coral. I'll be feeling it tomorrow. <laughs> love it, love getting old. What a great way to wrap up Rival Series 2 with an absolute smorgasbord of Lacone. So many epic performances from Lane Beachley and Serena Brooks to Chelsea Hedges and Katie Wilcombs, Soph Milanovic, Sam Cornish, Rochelle Ballard, and now Claire Bevel Aqua brings it home. Who will be the champion? I can't even decide. That's right, Vaughan rinsed corn deadly. It's over to the judges to make up their minds on who will be the Rivals Series 2 champion.